Hey guys, welcome back to my little slice of heaven. Today I'm going to be spending a little quality time with what I'm calling the ugly truck, a 2000 Silverado 1500 extended cab two wheel drive. Now I picked this thing up just a short time ago and it's got a ton of miles on it but it's mechanically stuck. However, the transmission does have a few issues and today that's what I'm going to try to take care of. So this truck has well over 300,000 miles on it, and I have no idea if the transmission is the original one or if perhaps it's been rebuilt at some point in its lifetime. Now that's probably the case, but either way it's not happy right now. The symptom that I'm experiencing it has no second or fourth gear, and according to my very limited knowledge of transmissions, that means it has a problem with either the band or the servo that applies the band. So I've got a couple different options. Number one, I can just try to replace the servo. So I went on to Amazon and I picked up a new Corvette servo kit. It comes with the two aluminum pieces and a couple of seals and it costs less than $20. Now I'm hopeful that this may fix the problem, but I'm also doubtful because with this many miles on the truck and with the color of the transmission fluid, more than likely the band is completely smoked or something has broken internally, it is kind of well known that those bands do have problems with cracking from time to time. So the first thing that I need to do is get this truck up in the air, pop the servo cover off and maybe, maybe I'll cross my fingers and I get lucky. So on a 4L60, the servo cover sits on the passenger side of the engine just behind the bell housing. You can kind of see this nice little round cover with a snap ring. That's what holds it all together. Now there isn't a whole lot of space to gain access to it because well, we've got a catalytic converter and the cab floor all within a very short amount of space of each other. But if I can get that snap ring popped off, I think there's a chance I can get everything out and take a look at it. Right there, so it holds it in. Just gonna try to give this cover a little twist, kind of loosen it up, and we're probably gonna get wet. All right, that's the servo cover, and I guess I didn't expect to find much wrong with that. Now this is the seal for the cover here one half of the servo all right after a quick inspection i don't think the servo is the cause of my problems here's kind of what i was looking for i pulled it apart and the first thing i was checking for is any damage to the aluminum every now and then i've seen different pistons inside transmissions where they'll just develop cracks and they'll let the fluid pressure bleed by i don't see any evidence of that the second thing I'm checking for is damage to any of the seals. Now, granted, these are old, and they're probably a little bit worn, but they're actually in fairly good shape for being as old as I think they are. So, again, I don't think the servo is to blame for having no second or fourth gear. That means it's the band, and to get to it, I've got to remove the transmission from the truck because there's no way to easily gain access. Now, all that means is I've got an afternoon of work ahead of myself. Let's get to it. looking through that I've seen in a very long time.
So I certainly breezed through some of the steps required to get the transmission out of the truck, but it's GM and it's fairly straightforward. There's just a couple of bolts that you need to be aware of. On the bell housing, there's a series that go around the side and the top. Now, a lot of these actually are a stud with a 13 millimeter nut on top that holds some other kind of bracket or wire holder or the dipstick in place. This guy right here on a GMLS, this does not have a bell housing bolt because the camshaft sensor sits about right here on the block, so there's no room for that bolt. There's a couple other small attachments that we had to undo on the side. The shifter cable, the shifter arm, the shift position switch, speed sensor, and main electronic connection over on the passenger side. Overall, not too bad. The one thing that you want to absolutely make sure of when you pull any automatic transmission apart from an engine is to undo the flex plate bolts. On this 4L60, there are three, and you want to access them through the hole where the starter goes kind of right down here. Just turn the motor over by hand and undo the bolts. After that, get the cross member out of the way, drain the fluid, and the transmission comes right out. Now, I gotta get this thing off to a rebuilder or maybe I'll try to find a junkyard one to save a couple of bucks. I'm not entirely sure right now, but with the transmission out, we're one step further in the build of the ugly truck. I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and please hit that subscribe button and smash the like button as well. I've got some more content coming at you and I can't wait to show you. We'll see you next time.